long ago, in a time not like today. I was digging through YouTube when I saw an ad and discovered something unnatural in the deepest part of the Play Store. Something wicked. Something just plain wrong. It was a game, but no, not like any other game. This game was horrible. My normal thing to do is show you the ad page on the store, but this game was so bad it had actually been deleted off there since I've uncovered this atrocious abomination. Actually, the very publisher disappeared into the abyss of the lost and forgotten. But, thankfully for y'all, I still have this game downloaded onto my phone, and that means, that's right, I could be the last holder of the game Brave Fox. Brave Fox, or Crash Brave Bandicoot as its name changed to once downloaded, was in the endless runner genre. You play as Crash as you run through the forest collecting coins and power-ups while beating tiki men, crocodiles, and apes, all while running from Metal Ratchet. Tell me where any of this makes sense. I wish I had the description to read out to you because it had even less to do with the game than a fondue restaurant has with unlocking a secret character in Super Smash Bros. But if I did, it would have gone somewhat like this. Explore the brave wilderness with Crash as he travels through six amazing forest levels. Collect fruit of his island while traversing against the inhabitants before getting captured. Use power-ups to make Crash jump higher, run faster than ever before. Find his mask and help him on his journey. Mask will help you keep safe from damage while you explore Crash Fox's world. Updates made weekly, so stay tuned. And no, there wasn't. There are so many things that bother me with this game. For one, why are there these weird black masses behind Crash's head? Are those his eyebrows? Well, if that's the case, why are they on the back of his head? Why is there a metal ratchet circling the cauldron you're standing in? Why is it that Crash can't close his mouth? Why is it that he twists one direction it deforms his body and mouth? But I would say the most important question of all right now is, why is it you're playing as Crash in the first place? Let's just take a look at this, all right? Crash Bandicoot is in the game. Ratchet is in the game. Aku Aku is at least in the app logo. How this game is not one giant copyright infringement is beyond me. But the developers have to draw Aku Aku? What kind of shit is that? Another thing that irks me is that before download, the game would show up as Brave Fox, which is why I named this uh, video Brave Fox. But once downloaded, it was Crash Brave Bandicoot. Well, if you knew it was a bandicoot, why call it a fox on the store? He is not a fox, clearly, and they clearly knew it too, not only because the name changed, but the image stayed the same. That'd be like saying Sly Cooper is a cat. If you're gonna call him by his name in the game, why not put it in the title of the download? Why only go halfway? The music is messed up in some parts. Like, why in the beginning is this intense battle music, and then shortly after you get this joyful stroll through the park music? The sounds are weird. When you die, Ratchet will sound like an entire tribe of people shouting with joy over how you got caught. Also, the crocodiles used to roar like a panther, but I guess just before deletion they put an update out to fix that. The opening screen is just one giant glitch, and before the delete, this was where I saw maybe three ads. Before the game even loaded, it bombarded you with ads. Now you only get to see two ads. Those are to another one of the company's games. You can use your coins you collect to buy things, like playable characters. You can either select Crash Bandicoot. If you want to leave the screen to go back to the home screen, you have to hit the tiny icon on the top left of the screen, which prior to deletion was half blocked by an ad, so you'd end up hitting on the ad a couple times before being able to return to the game. Once you die, the game will show you how far you've gone, and how many coins you've collected, and so on. You know what good games do that you really don't think about until after the feature is gone? The ability to skip or at least speed up this process. No, I don't want to watch my score and coins transfer. I really don't. But this game does not let you continue until after this has been added together. That means if you had a good run in this game and you got far, you're rewarded with a grueling 30 plus seconds of watching your useless coins transfer and your distance total. A good game would let you just tap the screen to skip that process, but here you're forced to watch it grade your homework before you can leave. There was a second game that this company made with Crash as well. Do you want to know what it was called? Crash Amazing Bandicoot. 
That's right, and I'm fortunate enough to have both these piles of garbage on my phone too. The second game is a lot like the first one, with very, very little difference. The most notable one is the opening screen isn't as glitchy, and prior to deletion this one was less ad infested. The icons are different too, but slightly. But now that the ads are gone, they don't really have any other notable differences. The biggest peeve of all for me isn't all these problems and lack of decent programming, it's the characters in this world. Why is Crash the one going through this weird world with gorillas, tiki men, and crocodiles? In a forest full of buses? I thought to myself, this can't be right. There's gotta be something the game is hiding. And I think I found it. There is a game that at the time of this recording is still on the store. A game that will look very similar to these two here. But no, this isn't with Crash. It's another mascot you've probably heard of. This game is called Sonic Jungle Run. It was made by Hamza, and the description really doesn't play into what it even talks about, nor do the instructions make sense. On opening the app, you get this wildly long blue screen. You almost think that the game is glitched and froze, but eventually you'll hear the all too familiar music and then the opening screen. The main screen looks just like Brave Fox, but you can tell there is more effort into this, if you can call these games effort. What's this? A list of characters? You can pick Knuckles first, then move on, move on, move on to Sonic. No, I wasn't trying to be funny. The sensitivity of the screen needs to be fixed. I had to use two fingers just to move it. But they have Eggman and Amy as well. Why are they phasing in and out of the background? Why are they facing away from you? I know you see their backs in the game, but you don't look at a menu of a restaurant where the image of the food is a finished plate. When selecting the care- Oh my god, what is that? Honestly though, this game plays just like Brave Fox. However, this game does get regular updates. It is shit in my book, but at least it's shit that's being polished. On top of that, I still question why Sonic characters are in a forest, fighting gorillas, and blah blah blah. But you know, with things I've seen today, I'm not even phased by the damage these games left on my psyche and phone anymore. I'm just like, oh, that's a thing now? Okay, sure. Overall, it's pretty apparent where these reviews are going to go. There is nothing these games offer you. The point of an endless runner is to see how far you can go, and when the background changes to something else, it drives you to see how much further you can go to see another background change. You don't get this feeling with these games. The characters are all out of place, and even more, the enemies don't make sense. These games feel blocky and chunky in every aspect of it, from the title screen to the exit screen. For this review, I'll be looking at all three games. In Sonic Run, I'm giving it trash. If they had any other character in this game, it would be decent, but this begs to have characters that they made themselves and not a borderline copyright infringement. As for the two Crash games, they are so bad that the company that released them dissipated into nothingness. I could very well be the sole owner of these games in the world, and look what I'm doing with them. They go beyond trash. My phone is offended just having them downloaded. And the worst part of it is, they were making money on these games. I saw Bray Fox in an ad on YouTube. Are they trash or treasure? Well, neither. They are so bad, they have their own category. Far, far away from the scale. We'll call this the shit to not be named.